At least 16 states have passed restrictive voting laws. These states account for 214 electoral votes, or nearly 79% of the total needed to win the presidency. The notion that we have massive voter fraud in this country is, is just not credible. There are no credible studies that have shown that this is a significant problem or a meaningful problem. Our fundamental contention is that the history of discrimination is such, and the practical experience is such, that if you have two things that are important, socioeconomic diversity and race, you should not blow up the bridge that has allowed people to get to college. We focus on education. We focus on economic justice, jobs, and opportunities. We focus on criminal justice, and we focus on political participation, the vote. And there are serious challenges in all of those. LDF lifts up the voices of individuals who stand with us for equality. We share the same commitment to the Constitution. And without these folks being willing to bring the cases to the courts, LDF would not be able to accomplish its mission. Today, LDF's most prominent cases are in voting rights and education. The Legal Defense Fund is facing a major challenge in a case called Fisher versus University of Texas at Austin. The Fisher case is the first case involving race conscious admissions policies and college admissions since the Michigan affirmative action cases from 2003, the Gratz and Gruder cases, which the late John Payton, former director counsel of LDF, argued before the Supreme Court. The danger here is that depending on how the case is decided, it could have a sweeping impact on higher education and access to higher education for African Americans. Too many of our high schools are racially identified. There's lots of residential segregation, which leads to segregation in schools, not by law, but by practice. And the result of this is that too many kids don't have these interactions until they get to college and are able to learn from each other and break down stereotypes. Even before Brown versus Board of Education, LDF represented Heman Marion Sweat, a young man who simply wanted an opportunity to attend law school at UT Austin. He was denied that opportunity for no other reason but because of his race. His case went all the way up to the U.S. Supreme Court, and the court ruled that he deserved a seat at the table. A long time ago, UT stood for exclusion. Now it stands for inclusion, and we want to keep it that way. And it was important for us to ensure that there were voices of students, and particularly African-American students engaged in this case, students who were working and living with diversity on the ground. Working with LDF has been truly a life-changing experience. Working with them really kind of instilled a sense of assurance that, that they cared about the issues that we care about, too. It's like finding an ally that you always knew you had, but never really had. This case also means that the isolation that I feel on campus sometimes when I'm the only African American in class or the only African American girl in class, hopefully it'll hold up to having some kind of leverage and combating the discomfort that sometimes I feel on campus. We know we can't afford to let the clock be turned backwards. If we're not vigilant today, then a landscape of opportunity tomorrow will look barren. We know that opportunity is not something that we've come upon by happenstance, but this opportunity has been hard fought and hard won. We believe that everybody should vote and that the path to the polls should be easy, not hard. We're fighting these battles in South Carolina, in Texas, and other places to ensure that African Americans today maintain the right that we've fought so hard for through the generations. There are really two choices that our country can make. Um, one is to lean forward and to embrace the minority voter population and to expand the franchise and uh, give minority voters an opportunity to participate in our democracy. Um, the second choice is unfortunately the path that we have seen many states take, and that is to focus on ways to frustrate minority voter participation, to discourage uh, participation in our democracy. I first got introduced to LDF when I was at a national conference and I was talking about what's going on on the ground in Texas. In the past two years, we've experienced an assault on voting rights that is historic, both in terms of its intensity and its scope. Our organization knew that there were things that can be done. Many other organizations on the ground weren't interested in taking any additional steps. Many representatives weren't helping us. In the past elections, Texas allowed for the use of student IDs, which were the IDs that our clients, who were students at historically black colleges in Texas, used to vote. 
Texas now proposes not to allow for the use of those student IDs, but will allow, curiously, for the use of concealed handgun permits. We did everything we could do at the point that we met Ryan Haygood, and we needed some legal assistance in order to get where we are today. We recognize here at LDF that equality is not a place that you arrive at and then stop. With each of our cases that we litigate, we take a step closer to our goal of equality for all. I can have all the courage in the world, but if I can't, I, honestly, if we couldn't have found the support to be able to get us to the next space, we'd just be organizing in circles just because of how big of a battle this was. Many years ago, Thurgood Marshall was called Mr. Civil Rights because he was the person who people called when the high stakes cases were on the line. LDF has continued that reputation as a first among equals in bringing the important cases and lifting up the voices of our clients. LDF will always be in the fight. We will always be there defending the opportunity of minorities to vote, to have access to higher education. It's just critically important uh, to who we are as a country. Education only works if there are jobs out there that the education is a payoff for. And the jobs only work if they're available on a non-discriminatory basis. And none of that works if the criminal justice system is corroding the communities and not letting anyone take advantage of the education or the jobs. And if you can't be a member of your democratic community, if you don't have voting rights and full ability to participate, then you're not part of the society. Those things all go together. We have to do all of those things together. Each generation has a role to play in fighting for the equality principles in which we all believe. Yesterday's victories are important, but they only matter if they continue to stand for my kids and your kids and their kids. And LDF's role is to continue to make sure that equality is a principle that we all commit to, but it only happens if we work for it. It's not guaranteed. From this vantage point, it's quite clear that this is a marathon, not a sprint. And while we have come a long ways on that marathon, we have to cross the finish line and we have a ways to go.